All right, I'm Dave Rat, and let's hunt some more audio gremlins. Um, I've got a Yamaha CL1 here and a Behringer X32, and uh, I'm gonna look at a few things today. One is routing latency. Um, the amount of time it takes a signal to travel through the console depending on how it is routed. What happens if you come into a console and directly out the output? What is the amount of time it takes to travel through? Second of all, does it take more time if you route from a channel to a group to left and right versus routing straight from a channel to left and right? Is there a routing latency that can be different? That can cause problems. If you have a signal, you run it to a group and you also bus it to left and right for some reason, um, or maybe you run it into a group and you send it to an effect and the effect returns to left and right, but there's some residual signal from the original that is bust to left and right from that effect. Well, now the, the original signal that's in that effect will be in conflict with the signal that's coming through the group. And this conflict is when you have two signals that are out of time, certain frequencies will cancel and add different frequencies will add and it'll cause a phasing effect um, if the amount of time that it's offset is small enough such that the frequencies that are canceling are way beyond the audible or usable range it doesn't matter in an analog console no matter how you route it the amount of time offset based on those routing differentials is so small that it is negligible or not even you can't even measure it it's not existent but with digital it is not the case the time it takes to travel through an analog console at the speed of light is wicked quick on a digital console this um, x32 is about 0.8 milliseconds this yamaha is a bit longer um Actually, I'm not going to show that versus original signal. So the Yamaha is almost two milliseconds. We know the X32 is 0.8. Let's take a look. I've got the X32 showing up on the yellow trace. I've got a 20 hertz square wave going into it. And if I PFL right here, uh, we can see the same square wave rise on the Yamaha. And we can see that it's two squares later than the X32. And if we look at the scope here, we can see we set at 500 microseconds, which is 0.5 milliseconds. 0.5 milliseconds per square, two squares, about a millisecond longer to go through the Yamaha. So it's about 1.8 or 1.9 milliseconds, if I remember correctly, versus 0.8. Um, full millisecond longer to travel through this console. So um, I'm going to do some comparisons. I've got multiple channels in series. I'm going into channel one, out of group one, into two, out of group two, into three, all the way up to group six, and then that's bus to left and right. So we can not only look at the cumulative latencies through the console, but we can also look at any other cumulative effects, like how, do, how does multiple six a to D and D to A conversions affect the frequency response, and how does that affect the noise as well? Um, so those are the other gremlins, frequency response issues, cumulative frequency response issues, cumulative noise issues, and routing latency issues. All right, so in order to get these consoles locked in, I've got um, on this X32, I've got it set up. So I'm gonna add 0.4 milliseconds of delay on the channel. And I went through this for a bit. I'm gonna add 0.6 milliseconds of delay on the, uh, <clears throat> on the um, uh, PFL bus so that um, I can get them back in. If I add it all on the channel, it doesn't give me the freedom of it doesn't work out as well. Okay, so now we can see that the two um, rises are right on top of each other. We've got these um, calibrated pretty well. Now, in order to get them perfectly calibrated, I've got um, an external word clock hooked up here, and I can alter the word clock frequency to the Yamaha. I'm at 48350 now, and uh, let's go to frequency here. And if I raise up, or lower down the clock frequency. 
we can alter the latency of the Yamaha. We're at 47,930. And uh, now we have identical latencies. Um, let's go ahead and PFL channel two. Oh, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and look at routing uh, latency. So this is channel one and it is sent to group one. So if I go to the X32 and I PFL um, group one, I can see a little level shift. That yellow line got a little bigger. There's a little calibration because I've really tried to, there's uh, inconsistencies in the calibrations in both consoles. And when you route to uh, a group and you go back into uh, the A to D, D to A, D A to D and D to A conversions, um, I've got those trimmed out. But we can see that these rise um, time, rise um, beginning of the sine wave is, square wave is on top of each other. Let's do the same thing on the Yamaha. And look at that. So this is purely the difference between channel one PFL and channel one is set to group one. And when it gets to group one, we see an additional one, two, three, four, almost two milliseconds. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, I speeded this up. I said it at 50 microseconds, so 50, 100, 50, almost 200 microseconds. So that's about uh, 0.2 milliseconds um, group latency, rounding to the group latency. Um, we could look at that to the, uh, let's go ahead and see what happens if we run that to left and right. So I will now send that to stereo and I'll PFL the stereo bus. And there it went and got delayed again. Um, and now we're seeing um, 100, 200, 300 uh, microseconds, 0.3 milliseconds of latency when it routes from the channel to the group to the left and right. And if we go straight from the channel to the left and right, we see about 150.15 milliseconds, which is about what we saw before. Okay, so we're seeing about 0.15 milliseconds every time we route somewhere in the Yamaha. Let's go back and look at the let me um, make sure I remove any busing here so I don't screw myself up later. Let's go back and look at the Behringer. So now if we solo, anywhere we solo on the X32, it has exactly the same amount of latency. Um, that's uh, pretty impressive. Actually, um, I was surprised to see the latency increasing as I stepped through the Yamaha and it holds steady in the X32. I also saw that on the M32, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do frequency response. So for this one, I'm going to remove this from the left and right, remove this from the left and right, and um, let's go ahead and crank up the um, frequency of channel two. So we were at a um, square wave. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go all the way up to, let's say, there we go. And let's get this PFL here. And there is our square wave, which is turned into a sine wave, which we're fine with. 10K waveform going into both consoles. We're locked up pretty well on uh, time. They're right on top of each other. And let's see what happens as I increase the frequency. 13, 14, 15. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right. So we're seeing that the yellow is slightly lower than the blue, 
at 20K, which is the X32, uh, when I PFL channel one of both. But I've got all these six A to Ds and D to As in converter. Let's look at cumulative frequency response. So I'm gonna bring this back down to 10K and let's PFL channel two to two. And we've got a little offset there. I won't worry about that right now. Three to three, four to four, five to five, six to six. And now we can see that the yellow trace has dropped down. I'm gonna drop down to a lower frequency. Here we are at 4K and we are offset in time. So I'm gonna correct for that with the um, uh, word clock. The dial the two in. I'm altering the latency on the Yamaha to match and they're pretty darn close there. We can see that the yellow is slightly lower at that frequency. As we go up in frequency to 14k, 15k, 16k, okay there's 20k. Um, at 20K, when we have six channels, six A to Ds and D to As in series on the Yamaha, we don't lose anything. It's still rock solid at 20K. On the X32, we are down, we are sitting at um, 200 millivolts per division, so two, four, six, 800 millivolts, and the Yamaha is at um, 1,000, 1,200, 1300 millivolts. So we're almost um, half the voltage, um, which I believe is 6 dB. So we're probably 5 dB down um, by running those multiple A to Ds and D to As in series um, on the X32. So we are seeing some high frequency roll off with just one D to A and A to D conversion. We barely notice it, but when we put a bunch in series, it becomes uh, more apparent. Um, all right, I hope you found that interesting. Um, routing latency, uh, frequency response variations that are cumulative, and also ponder something. Is latency a form of distortion? No distortion is the input is exactly the same as the output, but if it's late, is that a form of distortion or not? Okay, cool, cool, thank you for joining.